Hey everybody, it's Norman Will back for season four of Behind the Garage Door. Thank you so much for your patience. Now, we we'll probably won't be doing these every Thursday from here on out, so make sure you turn on your notifications if you watch us on YouTube. And if you uh, follow us on Facebook, thank you very much for the follow. So be looking for them. Uh, we have a few done, so they will be out you know, kind of frequently. But anyway, first one out of the gate, season four, episode one. Found a friend of mine that I've known since he and I were like 15, 16 years old lost each other for a couple of decades, and then for, you know, from the magic of Facebook, realized that we now live about 20 minutes from each other. We're gonna head out and see my friend John. Let's go. All right, so we made it out to John's house. Interesting drive into your house, by the way, John. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Avoid the potholes. <laughs> John, thank you so much for inviting us out to your house and sharing your cars with us. Now, a little bit of a backstory about John and I. We've known each other 30 years, yeah. and but haven't seen each other in 20, 25, 25, 25 like years. That, yeah. So when I first met John, he was working with my now wife, my girlfriend at the time. and. I don't. We all just kind of went our separate ways, and then by the magic of you know social media. No, you you're actually mistaken. Oh, I, I knew you before I knew Rochelle. Oh, because is it okay to say her name? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, you were you uh, you you were 17. I was 15 at Evie's Foods. Oh my God, that's right. I'd see, I totally forgot about that. So yeah. we've known each other 35 yeah, years. Yeah, 30, 35, 35 years. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's right. We worked at a grocery store together yeah. in Ohio. So anyway, then we get separated, yeah. and by the magic of social media, we end up living 15 minutes from each other yeah. in Florida. Yeah. So I don't know how that happened, yeah. but glad we reconnected, buddy. Yeah. So uh, I also didn't know, I mean, I, I think I remember that you were into cars mm -hmm. back then, but not to the extent that you actually are. Yeah. You've built some serious machinery over yeah. the course of the last 30 yeah. years, 25, 30 years. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of stuff. Um, one, of, one of my cars is actually in the uh, executive, you know, Ken, Ken Lingenfelter. Yeah. His uh, collection up in Michigan. Um, he actually bought my station wagon that I took a hot rod Buick Regal station wagon and dropped a 455 Buick big block <laughs> and then welded on the front end of a Grand National to it and then sprayed <laughs> the whole thing orange and blacked it out. And he bought it and said, this is how Buick should have built this car. And it's one he of still his has pride. It too, oh yeah, it's one of his pride possessions. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so without further ado, let's see what John has been working on here recently as we look behind his garage door. All right, so John, yeah. this, what you, 70? 1971 Buick GS 455 four-speed convertible. Holy, what? Is it a real, is it a real GS? No, it's a clone. Okay, that's fine. It's a clone, that's yeah. Fine. I, yeah, I can't afford the a real 71 GS 455 four-speed No, who can? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 good, good God, so you've had this car for how long? About 20, 25 years. Wow, so tell me the story. Where'd you find it? So I found it on eBay for $2,000, and I drove up to um, um, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the middle of winter and pulled it back because the guy said it didn't run, mm -hmm. bad shape, I bought it sight unseen. Ooh. I brought it home and it had a broken flex plate, that's all I had was wrong with it. And original floors, original trunk, everything is original on the car. Solid Still car. 50, 51 year old car, wow. original floors. Wow. Rockers, original fitness yeah. quarters, everything? Original everything, original bumpers, everything. I've had them re-chromed, but everything's original on the car. So what all did you have to do to it then? So I blew the 350 on it. Oh, good. And good. after realizing that it wasn't uh, the original 350 from the car, mm -hmm. um, I went out and got a 455 big block. As you should. Yeah. Threw it in front of an automatic, you know, turbo 400. Okay. And then said, one day I'll four speed it. Okay. So a week after I got the car back together again, I found somebody selling a four speed. Whole kit. Whole kit. Whole deal. For the, for the, for the Buick. With yeah. the pedal and everything? Everything. Everything. Whole kit. So I bought it, came home, ripped out the brand new Turbo 400 <laughs> that I just put in the thing, and uh, made it into the 455 four-speed. Well, see, car. when you backed it out, 
because I've, I've been here before, I've seen these cars before, yeah. but I forgot it was a four speed. Yeah. And that's just too freaking cool. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and so a little bit about, did you build this engine or did you buy it this way or? Yeah, so I built it. Okay. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. So it's uh, it's a board 30 over 455 big block with the TA 413 cam. Okay. Um, I can hear a little bit of a hammer. Yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah. good. It's, 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 it's a very fun car. Yeah. Um, Edelbrock four barrel aluminum intake with uh, um, a stock, uh, well, a modified uh, quarter jet okay. sitting on top of it. Um, so it looks stock. Yeah, it looks stock. It has the factory air breather on it and everything. Until you fire it up. Yeah. <laughs> are there, is, that, is that a functional scoop? Are yes, they, they yeah, fun yeah, functional scoop. Um, funny thing about that is it actually slows down the car. It's been proven that, they, that the Ram air is actually um, uh, not yeah. helping. Yeah, not helping at all. <laughs> well, because <laughs> it's, it's not uh, a scoop, it's like flat. Yeah. It's flat and then it's got to go in and the, the chambers are real small where the air goes in and so it actually restricts the motor, but it looks cool. It looks cool. Yeah. <laughs> so you painted the car. Yeah. What's the what's the name of the paint? So, is that a factory color? So this is the factory original Cascade Blue Code 24. Okay. Um, it's a PPG code with the uh, high build DCU 2021 high build clear sitting on the thing. He's talking fancy talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the third time I've painted the car since I've owned it. So. Has it always been back to this color? Yeah. Okay, so it was it originally this color when you got it? Yeah, it was this color. Okay, I've so never you didn't have to paint it. gaps, you didn't have to do any of the other stuff? Oh, I, did, I did. I okay. mean, I took it all the way apart. I mean, I took it down to bare bones. I cut the quarters off of it, welded new quarters off oh, of it. Oh, okay. They, were, they had a little rod on the bottom side yeah. of that, which is typical. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, uh, you know, I've completely redid the interior myself. So I've done the engine transmission. Rear ends of 3.2 you know Posi. You every and screw yeah. in this car. Yeah, I've touched every part of this car. That's so, so. And it's, it's the funnest car I've ever owned. I'll never get rid of it. Um, a lot of people forget that Buick, um, Buick made a muscle car. Everyone thinks of Buick and they think of like grandma's. Yeah. Grandma's oh, Buick. no, they absolutely made a muscle but car. The Buick Grand Sport. Was real, yeah, the G, well, GN, the Grand Sport. I've talked about, I've talked about this before and I can't, I can't remember what it was, but it was a Grand Sport, but I can't remember if it was like a 66, 65 Grand Sport. Yeah. A buddy of mine's dad had one and he still, and he had the original um, like pamphlet and flyers and stuff for yeah. it, like the dealership would have. And it, and it said, brain damaging torque. <laughs> that always stuck with me with these Buick 455s. Yeah. They are torque monsters. Yeah, you, you don't take them above 5,000 RPM. You don't it's have to. all bottom end. It's just it's, rips yeah. the tires off of it yeah. at like 2,500. Yeah, it's, that's it's hilarious. That's awesome. <laughs> so you had to replace all the interior and everything else? Yeah, so or was the, it some so, of it in decent So the interior shape? is all, all original stuff. I just completely recovered it. Okay. So. Very, very, yeah. very cool, John. What a, what a, a fantastic car. And Thank I you. got no issue with making a with making a Grand. Did they make a Grand Sport convertible in this yeah, year? They, they did, but they're very rare, especially yeah. if you get into a four speed. So they, you know, they did the GSX was only a hard top. And they were either white or yellow? Uh, white, yellow, uh, it was white, yellow, and I want to say black. Oh, you, you yeah. know what? I think you're, I think you're right. Yeah. Wow. Black with gold stripes. What a what a fantastic car! And yeah. So you have a lot of the original documentation on this car as well. Yeah, I, um, when I opened the glove box of the car, it had the original owner's manual. It had the protecto plate. Oh! And it had the original IBM punch card with not a crease or a blem on it. The stuff was actually like you would have gotten from the dealer at the time. I was yeah. amazed by it. So did you buy it from the original owner? No, so um, so the guy I bought it from an eBay, um, he had, he got it, he just couldn't mess with it, couldn't play with it or whatever. Right. So when I got it and picked it up, um, about five, seven years ago, I was going through my file looking at the millions of dollars I've spent in receipts on the thing. <laughs> and going I came like this from your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> <laughs> and I came across the protective plate and out of just pure grins, I Googled it. And I looked and, and I said, son of a gun, this guy lives at the same address. So. The same guy that owned the car lived at the same that address that was new, on bought the new. protecto plate. Wow. So I Googled his phone number, found it, called, and I said, hey, did you own a 1971 Buick? And he was like, who is this? You know? and, so I, <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, I, I said, don't don't be alarmed. I said, I said, I own this Buick, and I found your name in the glove box as the original owner. And he's like, you're kidding me. We loved that car. We drove it to California and back. And the only reason we sold it was my wife drove it through a flood and destroyed the engine and we didn't want to fix it so we sold the car and oh wow and i said well i own it and, and, I said, <laughs> I said, and it's still good and so he asked me for photos and we emailed back and forth oh, a couple cool. times and uh but uh it, it was neat if any of that story sounds familiar if, if you've seen our documentary on the uh on the boy at z28 that will and i did the exact same scenario mr hurley bought that car got the re protecto plate Decided to Google the guy's name. Still lived in, in in New Jersey. He called the guy. Hey, don't want to alarm you, but uh, did you ever own it? But I guess that he, this the guy Bob Boyette that owned that Z28. Yeah. 
he had had a lot of calls about that car over the years because the protective plate stayed with it and it exchanged hands a lot because okay. it's kind of a rare car. Yeah. So people want to go, hey, is this Bob Boyette? You know, their own this? Yes, it is. Yeah. But when Steve got a hold of him, it was like a totally different thing because it was a full on nut and bolt, like in 1969 restoration yeah. so wow so yeah steve and bob you know they hit it off well and it's such a, if you haven't seen that documentary on our youtube channel watch it so but any further plans for this car you got it pretty much exactly where you want it i'm just enjoying it i'm just going to drive the heck out of it um i don't really take it to car shows because people tend to pick a car park <sighs> cars at car shows you people that do it. that you suck <laughs> <laughs> They'll come Shut along up. and go, oh, yeah. well, that's, your the, that's not correct, or that's not correct. And they point it out, and it's like, dude, it's, it's, it's a fun car. Leave it alone, I you hate, know? I hate those people. Yeah. So, can't stand them. Yeah. so you're just going to enjoy it, ride out, and have fun? Yeah, I drive it just about every week. Um, and, you know, in the winter, when it's nice and comfy and 70 degrees, I drive it just about every day for lunch. Does that have air? Yeah, it has air okay. conditioning, factory wow. air conditioning. What a um, cool car. Yeah, it's neat. What a super cool Summertime, car. I drive it at night. Drop the top, no. stars, you yeah. know. Yeah comfy and all that so i drive it a lot 71 skylark grand sport clone 455 four speed yeah all right so we moved into john's shop here and this is a car that i'm familiar with but i don't know that i've seen three of them in my life tell us about this one so this is a this is an incredibly rare car there's about a hundred of them left in the world there um it's a 1977 monza chevy monza mirage it's one of 4,000 that were built. Okay. And in 1977, you could order this car with a factory wide body kit yeah. from GM, and they'd ship it off to Michigan Automotive Techniques, who would then take and bolt on the white fiberglass flares, um, V8 in the car, and it came with red, white, and blue stripes that came from the headlights all the way over the car, over the, the, the uh, rear spoiler. It's and an offset stripe too, isn't it? Yes, okay. it's an offset stripe. Yeah. And, uh, and then on the side, though, there'll, there will be a big decal that says Monza Mirage, and that'll all look like the factory stuff. Um, very rare car. Like I said, there's about 100 of them left in the world. So out of 4,000 of them, they all got just trashed? Yeah, the, most of them rusted out. These cars were just rust, rust, rust traps from, from the beginning. And they're a unibody car. So as soon as they start to rust, they, they fold in half can't fix them. So where'd you find this car? So this was an abandoned rotisserie project that I found out of New York. Okay. Um, the guy had, had owned it. Um, the, guy, the guy he bought it from owned it from Arizona who started the car. He put about $10,000 into rotisserie work. So he put it on the rotisserie, he turned it upside down, mm -hmm. powder coated the whole bottom of the car, rebuilt all the suspension, the transmission, engines, spent all this money on it. Yeah. And it got exhausted and sold it. Arizona car. Though. Arizona car. So it wasn't rotted out. Right. Gotcha. And so then that guy sold it to the guy in New York who owned it for five, six years, never touched it. And then he put it up for sale. And I saw it and I said, oh my gosh, it's a mirage. There's like one of a hundred of these yeah, left. And yeah, yeah. So I bought it and he, he delivered it in two box trucks. So he brought <laughs> so it. it was in a lot of pieces. Yeah, it was in a lot of pieces. The whole car was in boxes. None of this was assembled or anything. So the and flares weren't on it? The no. Spoilers, chin spoiler, nothing nope, was on it? No, none of, none of it was on and um, none of the blackout was done. And since I paint, I just started going through and spraying the car. And yeah. I've been building John it. John paints. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everything else, yeah. <laughs> so, did, so, uh, uh, did, was it painted? So it wasn't painted yet. Was the body work done? So, so the body work was done and some of the car was painted. Um, a lot of it was damaged, a lot of it was broken and chipped from being moved over the last 10 years or yeah. so. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I can just pull out and I spray gun, spray gun and start shooting panels and whatnot. So I fixed what was broken on it um, and now I'm just assembling it. Um, the problem was is nothing came labeled. So it came uh. in buckets and buckets of parts. <laughs> oh, I, oh Buckets of worst. screws. And I think the guy threw away all the original hardware and I think in his mind he was gonna replace it all, but nothing, comes with labels of how it was supposed to go back together again and so it's um hence, it's, hence it's the schematics yeah, that you have yeah, over here since i and i finally found the assembly manual for the car oh, um, thank God. and so <laughs> i i figure out where all vacuum lines are supposed to go electrical wiring and whatnot so but so it's still going to be a challenge is it a 305 yeah 305 came with originally? are you going to leave a 305 in it no i'm going to pull the 305 out set it on a stand it is the original motor so okay. i'm going to keep it for the car for its value Good. but i want this thing to be nasty and fast so I'm gonna build a 383 for it 
um, you know, the, uh, take a 350 and yeah. four, 400 crank yep. and stroke it. Heck yeah. And uh, make it a really high RPM. I don't want to tear it up to the point where I start twisting the frame. Yeah. Twisting the unibody and everything. Can you put frame connectors on it? You or can. You, okay. You can. All right. You That's can. A, such a weird spot for the alternator on that. The yeah. Frame. Is that, is that, did, did, are you going to put like a, one of the road to the front assemblies on it or are you going to leave the placement of the alternator and a power steering pump and all that stuff where it is? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to leave that all. The, the whole reason they did that is this is this is a factory air conditioning car. Oh, I see that. Yep. Yeah. And so the air conditioner is supposed to sit right next to the alternator there. Okay. And um, and so, so you kind of um, have to leave it there. Yeah, you kind of it's the only place that it can. Gotcha. Be. Gotcha. So 305 two barrel from the factory, you put a four speed in or automatic or? Uh, it's going to be an automatic. Okay. Yeah. So it has a 350 in it, a turbo 350 right now. Um, and it's got like a 273 gear. So it's got like a highway gear. And, 900 yeah, miles an yeah, hour. <laughs> it's, it's, so I'm I'm probably gonna put a 200 R4, um, 200 R4 over, overdrive transmission from like a Grand National change behind gears. it and change the gears to like yeah. a 342. That'll be cool. Yeah. That'll be perfect. Be fine. So those those look like Grand National wheels that are on it now. Those are American Racing Vector. Oh. Yeah. They similar are. to Grand National? Uh, yeah, very similar okay. to the early year Grand Nationals, uh, 84 and 85. Did the uh, the vector rims on it, and then okay. they changed to the steel, the steel uh, Grand National rims. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. What a cool car! How far yeah. off do you think you're? Uh, how far out do you think you are? I'm probably a year away. Okay. Um, fortunately, the whole car came, like, like I said, in pieces and buckets, but everything was done. So all the seats are recovered. Oh, so Headliner, you have those I have everything's redone. I just have to assemble it. So gotcha. That's one reason I wanted the car. It was minimal, minimal like work, rebuilding, welding, painting. Um, you know, recovering seeds because I hate upholstery work, oh, yeah. and um, and so it's just literally an assembly project. So I bought the manual and I get to bolt it all together again. Like so I, you, would you say the hard part was done? Yeah, the hard part yeah. was done. Hard part just, done. That's the busy work. Yeah, wow. Yeah, seventy-seven Monza Mirage. Monza Mirage, and it's and I and I am putting the stripes back on it. Oh yeah, um, it it needs it. I, th I think it's. Uh, I mean, this is a classic piece of history, which is what I wanted out of it. I know there's 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 not very mon many Monzas left. Yeah, I mean you don't see Monzas very often. But you're not going to find another Monza Mirage, especially a no. real one. Yeah, John, super cool project, fantastic yes. Skylark. I, I'm so glad that we refound each other and we yeah. can hang out and talk cars and shoot the sit stuff. around bonfires, drink beer, drink and, beer, yeah. and, and tell lies <laughs> and try to remember 25 years ago. John, That's thank right. you so much for Thanks, having man. us out. We Wonderful appreciate seeing it. you. All right, Thanks. we're going to head back to the dealership and wrap it up. All right, thank you so much, John, for being the first episode of season four of Behind the Garage Door. You know, and like John said, if you go out to a car show and you see a cool car and they've done something to it to make it kind of look like something else, don't pick the car apart. Don't be that guy. Just be happy that this guy's got something really cool. I mean, big block, four speed, you can never go wrong with that. And so looking forward to seeing that Mirage get completed. We'll probably go out once John gets that one done. He works fast, so we'll probably see that in an upcoming episode. Make sure you stick around, turn on your notifications. Thank you for the follow, and make sure you're here for another episode of Behind the Garage Door. Stingray Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference.